Hello everybody! In this tutorial I'm gonna explain to you the different types of variables that you have in C++. Uh, on the top here you have the different types of variables, their full name if they have one, if, so if it isn't already the full name, a brief explanation of what the, uh, what the variable is, and the size of each variable. And then underneath, uh, then here we have a few extra modifiers that you can add before um, each different variable and down here I have created a little example of how to use them. After this we're gonna go to Visual Studio so we can see it actually in action but now I'm gonna go step um, step for step through all of these different things and explain what they mean. First of all the integer that you write as int. Uh, basically it's a round number so it can never have any values behind a comma and um, it is always the size of 16 bits unless you give it a special modifier, but we're gonna go there in a second. Second, uh, The second thing is a float. A float is also really important, just like an integer, you're gonna use it a lot. And it's basically a floating point value, a number with always numbers behind a comma, even if it's zeros, it always has numbers behind a comma. And it has a size of 32 bits. Then we have a boolean, which you type as bool, and it's uh, basically a true or false statement. So it's either one or a zero, it's either yes or no. So it has a size of exactly one bit. Then we have a character. A character is basically just a single character. So anything that you can type on a computer. So this is a character, but this is also a character. This is a character. And even the tilde is a character. So. They're all just characters, and it has a size of 8 bits, since all of the ASCII things can fit in there. Uh, then we have a string, and a string uh, is basically just a lot of different characters behind of each other. So basically you can, the words or sentences are all strings. And the size of it's unknown, because it's uh, 8 bits multiplied by the amount of characters that you have in the string. And then we have a double. What a double is, is basically, a, yeah, a double of a float, so it doubled a float. So it's twice the, the size of a float. So a float is 32 bits and a double is 64 bits. And uh, the big difference between a float and a double is, is that uh, the position of a float is seven characters behind a comma and the position of a double is uh, 14 or 15, I think 15 characters behind a comma. So it has a lot more position that's why it's twice the size because it needs a lot more position. Now we have the different types of keywords. So we have signed. Uh, basically what signed means is a, something like a different variable can be both positive and negative. Every variable is standard signed. So you basically never type in signed uh, unless you really want to specify and <laughs> just yeah, really want people to know that it can be both negative and positive. Uh, then we have unsigned, and what unsigned means it, it, uh, that a value can only be positive. And what that gives you is an extra bit that was normally used to specify whether a uh, value was positive or negative. So basically the amount of uh, the highest number that you can store in it is doubled, because you have an extra bit available. <clears throat> then we have a long, and what a long is, is basically doubles the value of whatever variable you gave it. So a double integer would be 32 bits and a double float would be 64 bits and a double double, uh, sorry, not double, a long, a long int would be uh, 32 bits, a long float would be 64 bits and a long double would be 128 bits. So never do a long double, it's a lot of bits. Uh, and then we also have the long long keyword and basically what it does is it makes it a long, so it doubles it, and it makes it a long again, so it doubles that value. So an integer would then be, so a long, long integer would be 64 bits, for instance. Uh, and now the declaration of a variable. How do you declare a variable in C++? Well, you first specify the type, so int, float, bool, char, string, or double. Uh, then the name, so whatever name you want your variable to be, a variable to be. And then we can also specify the value if you want to. If we don't specify a value, so we just 
yeah, just give it a type and then a name and then we ended up with a semicolon because that's how you end a line in C++ then it will be just a random value so it's always useful to at least type uh, do type name is equal to zero at least uh, so we can also specify a value and we can also type a modifier in front of it so for instance signed unsigned long or long long uh, here are a few examples so you have an integer and i just called it my first int and here I did not specify a value. This is completely legit in C++, this works. But we can also type it as int, my second int, is equal to 20. This is exactly the same, but now you already gave it a value. Oh, oh. <laughs> and the third thing that you can do is give it a special modifier. So here I typed unsigned int, my third int. And this is also fully legit, so now it's an integer that can be like double the size that it normally be because it's unsigned so it can only be positive so let's now jump over to visual studio and make a project where we're going to type some code okay so we're now in visual studio uh, we're going to create a new project either via the new project and start or file new project uh, then it's going to load the window and we're going to specifically select win32 console application this is important just select that one and then we're going to give it a name so i'm just going to call it tutorial one then we're going to go to the um, application wizard we're going to hit next and then we hit empty project this is important otherwise you're going to get a few random headers that you can't delete and it's just a pain. Just press empty project and everything will be fine. Then we press finish. Then it's gonna create the um, project for us and then we can make a file and we can start coding. So now it created the project. Uh, now we add. I need to add a C++ file. So a file that we can write our code in. And that needs to be in the source file folder. Uh, so we right mouse button on source files, add new item, uh, then we specify C++ file, so CPP. Uh, if you can see it, make sure that you select the official C++ right here. And then uh, underneath here we can give it a name. So uh, one of the files that is always handy to have, like give it exactly this name, is, is main. So we know that that's where our code starts. We can call it differently you can start your code from whatever file you want but it's always handy to have a file called main so other programmers know that that's the file where the, uh, that that's the file where the code start okay then we press add and it will create a file for us now it's opened and then we can start with our main loop or well with the main function so the one function that will always be called at the beginning of a program is uh, int main so the main function uh, functions will be explained in a further episode like exactly how they work and how to declare them and all but this is just one thing that we need right now in order to write code okay so let's now create one of each type so we're going to create an integer a float a bool a character a string and a double so let's start with int so we created an int with the name my first int like that's at least the name that i'm going to give you you can call whatever you want and would just work fine and we're going to specify it as phi and we end with a semicolon this is really important otherwise a line is not closed and it will give you errors so now we're going to create a float uh, my first float and we're going to give it a value of 0 0.5 since it's a float so we can give it numbers behind a comma or pointer in this case but because it's a float, we need to specify an F behind it. This is really important, otherwise it's gonna be a double, and that means that it's gonna take twice the amount of memory, and a conversion is not necessary because you can also just specify an F behind it and it's all fine. Okay, uh, the next one is a Boolean. So we're gonna create a bool, oh, not blue, bool, my first bool. And we're gonna give it either a value of true or false. But you can also specify 0 or 1, but there are special keywords that are basically equal to 0 or 1. This is true and false. Literally just true or false. 
So let's specify this true. And then the next one is a char. So we're going to create a char, my first char. And then we set it equal to, yeah, a character. Um, but the way that you specify a character is with this single quotation marks. This is really important, the single, uh, single quotation marks. So but, uh, in there we can specify characters, so let's do the T, and then we end with the semicolon. Okay, the next thing, the string. The string you can't just, if I, if I would just type in string, nothing would happen, like it would not find anything, it would give us a quick little line underneath it. Why is that? That's because a string is not standard, but most programmers see it as something standard. You need to include a special file that contains a string. So at the top of a program, what we want to do is to a pound sign or a hashtag include. And then there are two different types of include. Uh, you can include with the double quotation marks that will include something that um, is inside of the project itself. So either, uh, so one of the header files, uh, but uh, if you want to access something that's already written by Microsoft, for instance, then we need to use the smaller than bigger than. And as you can see, a whole list will appear with different things, like a lot of different things that you're probably never going to use. But the one thing that we're going to use is called string. So basically just string. And that will include strings for us. But wait a second, now if we just type string, still nothing will happen. Why is that? That's because the string is part of the standard namespace. Uh, one of the things that's created for us to separate um, yeah, some different things from the main program, just in case you want to use something else. It's also called the same name because it's a common name, but then it will give a conflict if it was, if it was just always accessible. So they've created something called namespaces. I will explain namespaces in a later tutorial, but the one thing that I want, the one namespace that we're going to use is called STD. Remember that name, it's really important. STD. And then in order to use a namespace, we need to do the double, double dots, like whatever they're called, I forgot the name. And now if we type in string, you can see that we can find a string. So we can set it equal to, oh, we, get, we uh, need to give it a name, my first string. And then we can set it equal to whatever. But how do we specify a string of characters? Because if we would just type something, it would give us a squiggly line. And if we would use the single quotation marks, it will also give us a squiggly line because it's a uh, single quotation mark is only supposed to be one character. So in order to specify a string, we use the double quotation marks. So now we can type in whatever you want. So let's type in my first string. And then we end with a semicolon. It's really important. Okay, but there's another way to use, uh, to get to string. There is a way that we can just type in string, my second string, and we set it equal to my second string for now. There's another way that this will work. This is possible to work. What we can do is we can say, hey, there's this one namespace that I'm going to use a lot. So I want to make it so I can just access things without typing it out every time. The way that we do that is we type using namespace because we want to use a namespace uh, and then the namespace that we want. So STD and then with the semicolon. So what this does is it will make it uh, make it possible that we can just type in string. You see, no screw the lines behind, uh, be, uh, underneath string anymore, but we can still access everything using the namespace. So right now, both of these strings are valid. Okay, third thing, a double. So we just type in double, then my first, oh, first double, and we can set as equal to the same thing as a float. So let's put it at 1.8. But the one important thing is you don't specify the F at the end right now. A double is always just gonna be whatever value without an F at the end, because it's a double. It's something different than a float, even though it looks like a float, it's internally different than a float. Okay, and these are all the different types of variables that there are in C++, unless you also wanna, uh, let's also do the, like one with the keyword. So let's do a long, long, 
So we type in long, long again, and then int. My u, my my first huge int. So we can set it equal to a huge number, and it will still work. Like this might be two bit, but I don't know actually, since it's sixty four bits. That's a lot. So this is also work. So now we can run the program using either F5 or the green arrow at the top. And, well, nothing will happen since we haven't done anything with the characters yet. Oh, yeah, with the variables yet. But it won't give us an error, or, uh, error if I'm correct. Yeah, it will just close. So the one thing that we can do right now is we can print out all our different things. So in order to print out things, we need to include yet another file. So we do the hashtag include or pound include and then we include iostream. iostream is a file that you basically always want to include because it's a really commonly used file. So now we can once again call the std namespace which is not actually necessary anymore because we used using namespace std. Uh, so now we can use c out, right as count. Uh, it, it stands for console out since we're every time running a console uh, with this function we can print out something to the console the way that we use this is we push something into the C out so we push something into the console and we do that with a double quotation a double lower than so now we can push in my first int and then it will display the int and then we can do also a C out for my first float and it will print it out too but now if you just run a program as you will see or probably not see because yeah it closed instantly the one way around that is using control f5 instead of just f5 or just a green arrow so if you press control f5 then it will keep it open but wait a second it says 50.5 but my first int was 5 and my first close was 0 0.5 so why does it say 50.5 that's because we didn't specify that I needed to put an enter or space or something at the end so the thing that we're gonna do now is use another thing that std includes and that is end all so we're gonna push something else in to the C out to the console it's something called end all which stands for end line so we're gonna do it with both the into the float and then we're gonna run it again using control f5 and as you will see right now it says 5 and 0 0.5 so we're gonna do the same for all of the different things so I'm just gonna use control C control V in order to copy it a few times and then just modify the names okay I'm gonna need another one so, so if we now run the program with control F5, it will show us exactly everything that we've created. So 5, 0 0.5, 1 because it's true, uh, 1 is true, 0 is false, T because we specified the characters T, my first string, my second string, 1.8 and then press any key to continue, that shows it because we press control F5. Okay, this was it for the tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to do different statements, for instance, an if statement oh. or a for loop, so for, and we're going to learn what we have to put in there, uh, in there, a while loop, and a do while loop. I'm going to learn you all of these different things in the next tutorial. So thanks for watching and see you next time.